Christians will be by minority in America by 2070, says new study. A recent Pew study shows that Christians are likely to become a religious minority in America. The trend of snowballing religious disaffiliation has been noticed by Pew since the 1990s and is described as, quote, reshaping the U.S. religious landscape. The study, titled Modeling the Future of Religion in America, identified the so-called switching rates of more than 15,000 American adults surveyed starting in 2019. The participants of the study were asked, quote, in what religion, if any, were you raised? And what is your present religion, if any? The resulting differences in the responses was then weighted against another research uh, conducted in 2020. The study simulated four scenarios, such as switching, no switching, steady switching, and rising disaffiliation with limits, and rising disaffiliation without limits. And I'll explain what that means in a second. According to Pew, regardless if regardless of the regardless if the switching trend slows down or hastens up, it will be roughly the same. Quote, the projections show Christians of all ages shrinking from 64% to between a little more than half, 54%, and just above one third at 35% of all Americans by 2070. However, the study clarified the per that the projections are not predictions, and they might also be affected by unknown events such as war, economic depression, climate crisis, changing immigration patterns, or religious innovations. So this is really interesting. Um, I think this would be <laughs> true. I should say positive gentrification. <laughs> um, if you scroll down, Armin, we embedded a tweet in this article. And if you could please click on that tweet, like looking at these images will help us understand this a lot more. So um, if you, in fact, let me blow this up so I can see it better. Okay. So they created four different simulations of what could happen. And this is based off of the trends we've been seeing for the past like 20, 30 years. And they're kind of like playing around with how these could happen. So first I want to define what they mean by switching. So they examined, this is the first time Pew Research Center has examined the transmission of a parent's religion to the, to, to the children. And so they examined what is the mother's religion and then what is the child's religion. And did the child say in their early life that they identify with that religion? And if they did, then they consider that a successful transmission. And the same would apply for a non-religious family. If the parents are non-religious and then the child is non-religious, that would also be a transmission. Okay. But they, they were specifically looking at the transmission from the mother because they say that apparently mothers are more successful in transmitting their children to religion, trans transmitting religion to their children. And also because 25% of American children are have a single parent and most of those are single mothers. And so they yeah, have to take that into account as well. That itself is like a tragedy. That's horrible, but that's a topic for a different day. So, <laughs> um, so they were looking, okay, first was the religion successfully transmitted. Okay. So they, they look at that between the ages of zero to 15. And then if you, whatever religious or non-religious identity you have at the age of 15, if that changes after the age of 15, they consider that a switch. So, or a conversion of a sort. And so in the first scenario, they looked at steady switching which means, okay, I'll just read the caption. Movement into and out of Christianity remains stable based at recently observed trends. So just at the rate that we have seen over the past few decades, let's say it remains exactly the same. What, what would that look like projected outwards? That is, in each new generation, 31% of Christians become religiously unaffiliated before they turn 30, and 21% of unaffiliated people become Christian. So as you can see, after the age of 15 and before the age of 30 is when most people switch their religious affiliation. 
And then after the age of 30, it becomes much less likely that you will switch your religion again, around more like 7%, specifically in regards to Christianity, because that's what they were examining and what they had the most data on, right? So as you can see, the current rate is that out of every generation, 31% of, of Christians will become a religious nun. That's not necessarily an atheist, you know? That could just mean, oh, I have no religion. Oh, I'm kind of spiritual, but I'm not religious. Oh, I'm an atheist. Oh, I'm an agnostic, blah, blah, blah. All of those things are considered none. So it's not necessarily, oh my God, everyone's an atheist now, right? Just to clarify that. So out of every generation, 31% of Christians leave to become religiously unaffiliated. Meanwhile, only 21% of those that are religiously unaffiliated switch into Christianity. So we're winning on that demographic front. So if that was the case, and that trend stayed exactly how it is, what would that look like by 2070? So by 2070, in that scenario, Christians would be down to 46%, and the unaffiliated would be up to 41%. So <laughs> Armin giving the slow clap in the background. <laughs> so... And then in the other scenario, this is where things get like a little confusing because they use like statistical things. So the second scenario is rising disaffiliation with limits. So let's talk about what that means. In each new generation, a growing share of Christians switch out before they turn 30, while a shrinking share of nuns switch in. But the switching rate is capped to prevent the share of Christians who leave the faith from rising above 50%. So this is like a scenario that's not likely to happen in real life because it's like, it, it, this is not how real life happens. It's literally, this scenario is literally counterfactual. They just do this for, you know, predictive reasons where they say, okay, in our predictive model that we construct, we're going to let the trends go as, as we have seen in these predictions. And then once it, once 50% of Christians have left and become unaffiliated and is reached, all of a sudden the trend just stops. You know, that's not how things happen in real life, but that's what with, with limits, what they talk about in the with limits thing in this statistical analysis, that's what that means. Um, so even if it, even with the limit, if that was the case, Christians would go from 64% today to 39% by 2070. That's with the limit. <laughs> That's interesting. Now, and then meanwhile, the religiously unaffiliated would go from 30% today to 48% by 2070. Okay. Wait. Now scenario three, rising this disaffiliation. Is, go ahead. This is, this is a different trend than other countries. Like we know don't get like too excited. This is just United States. Like we're not seeing such major shifts in other places though. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. actually, well, maybe I should get into that in a little while. Basically the research talked about how this trend is actually more like America is catching up to the rest of Western Europe in terms mm. of their rates of secularization nice. of the population. So finally, in many ways, right, yeah. we're actually you guys catching, are finally up to other catching up to developed countries. You know who's beating both Europe and the United States? Iran! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, just major jump, like fall behind, like it was behind very religious for many years, way behind other countries, and then it just took a giant leap forward. Aggressively anti-religious. Yeah. Yeah. But. So scenario three is, okay, what would religious disaffiliation look like, but if we did not put a statistical cap on it? Okay. With each new generation, a growing share of Christians switch out before they'd turn 30, while a shrink, I can't talk, shrinking share of nuns switch in. None, no cap is opposed on such switching rates. And so then that would mean that by 2070, Eight, religiously unaffiliated would be 52% versus Christians would be 35%. And then scenario four is, let's say that literally no one changes their religion after 2020. So no switching. No one changes their religion 
after 2020? What would that look like in 70 years? Because of like generational effects, right? And that even so, if that was the case, Christians would still be only 54% by 2070 and atheists would be 34%. So we wouldn't have, not atheists, excuse me, religiously unaffiliated. That's an important distinction. Um, so even in that case, there's still going to be a drastic yeah. drop. It would be no switching, but it will still address a major change. But the, the but that's not going to happen. Like, um, like uh, that's scenario four seems very unrealistic, right? Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody. So, like, if nobody changes their changes their mind, yeah. So, I, I, this very unrealistic scenario four is the only scenario where no switching will happen. Yeah, and again, they just do that kind of thing for the sake of illustration, right? Right. Or um, so there was one thing that I thought was really interesting. So, Armin, if you and go... yet, yet we are moving, people are losing their rights. Like it's amazing. You know, the trend is people are becoming more liberal and less religious, and yet politics is moving in the direction where abortion is becoming illegal. How does mm -hmm. that happen? Tell me, how does that happen? That happens because, because you morons are not involved. active. Yes, because you idiots are not <laughs> getting organized. Okay. You're like, yeah, I'm not going to be involved. Isn't that the religious? <laughs> okay. You're lazy. You just let the religious people do all the organizing and community building because apparently community building is only a religious thing to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is what you get. This is what you get. You get your rights taken away when you give, when you let religions have a monopoly over community building and fundraising. Anyways, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. So, wrong. um, if yeah, of course I'm not wrong. Um, so I thought this was really interesting. Out of all the trends, uh, I wasn't able to read the full report today because it's like almost seventy pages long. But I read a lot of it, and I believe they said that it was scenario number three, which is the most likely. Because in terms of, oh, okay, oh. even if we go with the rates that we see nowadays, scenario one, let's say the rates we see now remain completely the same. That's actually like not very likely to happen that the rate is just frozen in time, right? So scenario yeah. three is potentially the most likely. And again, it should be stressed that this is not a prediction, right? This is a projection. Mm. There are other things that can change. And part of the thing that drives these changes is the fact that the Christian population is aging so much and that each successive generation is less religious. And what's interesting is that they say that the non-religious identity is more quote unquote sticky than the Christian identity. What does that mean? That means that if someone becomes non-religious, they are less likely to go back in to, to switch again. They're less likely to go to a different religion. They're less likely to go back to Christianity versus the yeah. Christians. If someone leaves, it is way less likely that they will go back. So the religion, the non-religious identity sticks more than the yeah, Christian yeah. identity does. And this it becomes compounded across generations. Right. Interesting. So we're going to say glory to the atheist Oma. <laughs> Also, Ahmad in the live chat has a message for you. Oh, Ahmad is saying, thanks, Susanna, for your support for Iranians in Vienna yesterday. Great video you record with my phone. Oh, hi. I can't believe you're here right now. <laughs> this is a dude that also climbed the flagpole <laughs> and was waving Wait, the flag see, with me. I want to see that video. Do you hi, have a Ahmad. video? <laughs> That's Can funny. I, I, he was going hard. Can we um, can we get can we have that video or no? Uh, I don't have any. Okay, Ahmed, have Ahmed any. send Susanna or Bob back the video, please. Thank you. I want to see it. Um, um, wait, Armin, can you go back to that that no, Twitter no. thing because there was another um, figure I wanted to look at. Oops. We have to move to the next news, though. Okay. 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 Yeah. What? Um, wait. Can you scroll down? Was it this one? Um, Susie, Susie literally likes going over numbers and stuff. This one? 
Was this what I was Such doing? a nerd. Such a nerd. Oh, yeah, man. this was it. This was it. So this refers to the stickiness. So young Americans are now less likely to become or remain Christian. And if you look at the figure on the top, it says percentage of U.S. adults who are blank, like who are raised Christian or not, or raised religiously unaffiliated who are Christian in their adulthood. Mm. And over the past 30 years, the Christians, the, the U S adults who are raised Christian, who remain Christian goes from 90% to 65% in 30 years versus the people who are raised non-religiously who become Christian in their adulthood is also declining. It, it went from, oh, I was raised like non-religiously and now I'm Christian. That was 44% down to 21%. Oh, okay. The, so both the commerce, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then the reverse is true. And a percentage of U.S. adults who were religiously unaffiliated, who were raised religiously unaffiliated or raised Christian and then became religiously unaffiliated in their adulthood. Uh, so the ones is... who were raised so... religious non-religiously are more likely to remain non-religious now. And the ones who are raised Christians are more likely to become non-religious now in their adulthood. This, this red line here is social media. <laughs> because this is, this is the work of activism, right? Mm -hmm. This is, yeah, this is, this is what we're doing right here. Anyways, and, we should and, move on. No, we no, should one, move one, on. One, I have one oh. final point. I have one final point. One thing that's right. important to highlight, because you talk about this, Armin, all the time, is that we cannot take for granted that this is going to continue. Because trends can yes. be reversed all the time. Yeah, that's, right? this is what proves it. This is what proves it, okay? This just doesn't happen automatically, okay? So this is not just a trend, okay, that, uh, that just automatically happens. You have to change people's opinions, okay? Mm -hmm. Some of this, yeah. Um, like this is, this is, we have no influence over this, right? We have no influence over this. We have influence over this. And yeah, that's it. That's our work here. Yeah. yeah. And well, okay, there was there's one final oh my, that I thought said, this oh is one God. final quote. This is really it. That is so yeah. important. It said the four main scenarios combined with four alternatives outlined in chapter two show that rates of religious switching in adulthood appear to have a far greater impact on the overall religious composition of the United States than other factors that can drive affiliation over time, such as fertility rates and intergenerational transmission, i.e. how many parents pass their religion on to their children. So what that means is that the, the switching of religious affiliation or deconversion, so to speak, has a much greater impact than basically, can we have enough babies to repopulate the number of people we're losing? That cannot compensate for the amount of people who are leaving religion because the right. sticking, the, the switching is that strong. Nice. I think that's a super important thing to highlight. So like this trend is like, we, I mean, we, we can't just let put our hands back up and say, okay, we like just, okay, we can go home now. Right. But this is a very positive sign. Yeah. Good job. U.S. finally joining the rest of the civilized world. Well, hopefully by 2070. <laughs> like it took a while, but you're getting there. It's weird that the most powerful country in the world is so far behind in this. But okay, never better late than never, I guess. Right? Get my best selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.